Hi, this is K5 and uh, welcome to part two of uh, my October haul. And uh, I'm going to start off with this piece here. Quite a nice little articulated lorry. Um, in relatively good condition actually. Um, found this one at my, sh at my little shop. Now this one is a 1980 Lesney, made in England. Articulated truck. Um, I think I found one of these a while ago. There's another little international Macau Ford Escort. I think this is a Ford Escort Mark III Cabriolet. I did find a white one of these as well, but the white one was a lot more uh, chipped up. So I decided to go with this really nice blue one. Quite nice, actually. How about this then? This is a, uh, I think it's a C5 Corvette from the 80s. Very cool piece. I love the way that they've uh, constructed this one. Again, it's like made in Macau, look. This is a 1987 Corvette. That's probably about the right age as well. But the way that they've uh, strapped in this uh, plastic band here, obviously that's connected to the seats. And possibly the chassis, although well, the chassis does look like a separate piece. But I love the wheel wells on this. They're just solid, brilliant, very nice construction. And a little bit of bounce still in it as well. How about this then? I found another Icarus, an Icarus coach from 1986. This one's a slightly later international piece if you've got 1986 on this one and 1987 so there must be a transitional period in the time zone for made in Macau to made in China but this one isn't too bad actually I do have another one of these that I found a while ago it was a lot more chipped up so I'm very pleased to find something in slightly better condition um, not bad at all how about this then? I was absolutely amazed to find this one. A really, really nice piece. One of my favorite cars, a Ford Thunderbird. Um, this one's uh, from 1982. So this is the, uh, again, this is a Lesney England. So it's still, again, this is the transition from Lesney England over to Maiden Macau. But this is very nice to have have this piece. Unfortunately, though, this one appears to have had a little bit of a touch up on it. If you notice the the paint on the uh, the bonnet, there isn't all it should be, and also there's some red splashes on the base there. But other than that, not, I'm very pleased to have it. Actually, it's a very nice piece. Look at that ex excellent, excellent grille detail. Absolute beauty, and that the addition of that uh, spare wheel on the back there. Just a diamond, absolutely diamond. Staying with the Macau, uh, here's a Macau, very nice little, uh, I think it's a C1 or C2 little Jeep. You notice there, made in Macau. This is on the base there, what's that, 1981. So, although the back, the top half of the Jeep was in the lineup for, well, for, since the 70s, early 70s, the, um, the base is obviously an extra addition. I'll have to have a look when I do my Jeep thing, which will probably be next year, the way this is going. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's another nice little Jeep. Again, the Golden Eagle on the front there. That's what I've, I've been chasing, the Golden Eagle Jeep. There's a little variation, a little Lansing Bagnall uh, forklift truck. This one's not in too good shape, um, but the interesting thing about this one is the molded in steering wheel. So this, that makes this one a slightly later piece, uh, even though it says on there made in England. This is probably something from the uh, the early 80s. Um, this is like the last of the line of this particular one. And then they had a um, uh, one came out with a uh, big roll cage on the top, which I've got an example of, but I'm uh, missing the roll cage right now. So anyway, yeah, I like collecting these. This then, a Metro police vehicle. This is the uh, Plymouth Grand Fury, number 10. Again, this has been very well played with. But uh, given that, considering it's the actual tempos and the wear and tear isn't too bad. Very nice, lovely, uh, again, lovely detail at the front there. Splendid little light bars on the top. They must be part of the windshield though, given that it's all a bit blue. Staying with the police vehicles, check this out. 
lovely. It's a Rollomatic Range Rover, by the looks of it, from 1975. If you spin the back wheels there, you get a spinning, <laughs> a spinning top piece. All rather dramatic, really, for just that little tiny bubble. But uh, not bad, not bad at all. I do like it. There is a there is a, uh, a market out there, I think, for these Range Rovers. Um, so it's quite nice to find them in the wild. They do fetch a premium. Staying with the Rollomatics. How about this then? Now, if you've uh, watched uh, a few videos back, you'll have noticed that uh, Stephen Lum sent me one of these. And I found one of these again in the wild. This one's got the tracks as well. And it has the special function. Whoa, here we go. Oh yeah, just makes a bang, little pop. Brilliant. Now when I picked this up, I really wanted to um, to take to steal the tracks off it because if you notice, someone's painted all the paint, brown paint all over it, which is a real shame. Um, but the tracks I thought might come in useful for my snow my snow track restoration that I've been doing. But uh, I did I have actually tried already to. Uh, put these tracks on there and uh, they don't quite fit which is a bit of a shame they're about two millimeter two millimeters short or uh, probably less than an eighth of an inch how about this then but this is very nice the shadow mark 2 number 39 very cool piece it's another late uh, super fast right at the end of the super fast period opening doors very good, very, very nice piece. Um, I don't have too many variations of this. I'm, in fact, uh, this is my second silver one that I own, which is ironic because it is called a silver uh, silver shadow. But, um, and again, I think the same person that painted that car red also attacked the tail lights on this, which is a shame. But yeah, it's okay. Not too bad. Oh, another super fast. <laughs> the Blaze Buster. From 75 so this is from around about the same period as uh, this piece sort of I like to call it the uh, the chunky chunky matchbox super fast period or uh, for, for most of you collectors out there the uh, the late super fast period um, quite interesting piece though it does have a, a moving ladder made of plastic I think this crane is also plastic in here as well with a it's got a metal base though it's quite nice. It's probably a uh, a good fire engine for putting out fires at airports, I would imagine. And quite bouncy too. Wow, a nice little piece actually. And finally, from the super fast, we have a bus. Well, actually, this is not a super fast, but it does have the older style wheels on it. This is the Leyland Titan. It says on the base there. This is a Macau piece, but originally, uh, originals. Uh, copyright is 1981 on there so there we go so that was my 80s 70s and 80s uh, matchbox I've got a couple of um, a couple of pieces now from the 60s so uh, let's have a look at those shall we all right and first up is this this is the this is number 70 the grit spreading truck Fantastic piece, probably from around about 1960, 68 or something like that. The nice feature about this is it, I finally actually got one with the uh, opening grit spreading door. So I can actually now put things in here and spread some grit. So I'm very pleased about that. Look, there we go. Very interesting piece, a little uh, Ford truck. It looks like a COE, probably a little Ford COE truck. Very nice. And staying on the COE, we have this Bedford. This is brilliant, this one. Unfortunately, this my first Bedford uh, BP tanker with some seats. And the seats lift up too, to reveal the engine. Brilliant. Not too bad shape either. Love these old black wheelers. Fantastic, yes, the Bedford, and that's number 25. Brilliant. Fun Ho. 
Fun Ho. And this is a fire engine. Amazing. Quite a nice looking little fire engine actually. I'm not sure which one it is. But it was it and also I think it's been attacked with the paintbrush as well at some point. But still it's uh it's an interesting casting. A two piece casting at that. It's got a base, a body, and then they've added a little extra piece on the top there, that ladder, which looks a little bit bit forlorn I would say. But overall not a bad piece. Reminds me of um a Lesney. And I'm going to show you the next piece because this really will remind you of a Lesney. Now I collect number 13s and this is um, in the Lesney lineup. This would have been the uh, the Dodge number 13 Dodge truck, BP truck. Um, but I mean, that's because this truck was around. Doesn't mean to say it's a copy. It's just interesting to have a variation or a different, even a different manufacturer's taken. This one actually feels slightly smaller than the uh, the Lesney version. Again, a two-piece construction. This uh, this bed and the chassis are all one piece. If you notice that they've clamped the uh, the, the the axles there to the the base of the chassis, and the extra piece for this one would probably be the light uh, the bubble on the top there, and there would have probably been uh, some sort of hook on the back there. But uh, yeah, very simple, but not too bad. I mean, this is probably from around about 1966 or thereabouts. Again, look, Fun Ho, New Zealand. Very, very simple, just stamped on the bottom there. Brilliant. And then the final piece that I found from uh, Fun Ho was this, which I thought was just iconic because this is a utility vehicle, a ute. I'm guessing it's a Holden, but uh, to get an actual ute, <laughs> as the Australians call them, or the New Zealanders in this case, it's just brilliant. So this is a, an Antipodean vehicle doing uh, Antipodean things made by the Antipodeans. Love it. And now we're going to have a look at the uh, the MoCo of the month. So uh, first MoCo I found was this. What a little uh, cherry that is. I have never seen the... Uh, this particular moco before very very pleased to get it it's the citroen ds 19. i quite like the base on this as well this is number 66 by the way it's got a kind of curve curvature to the base really 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 awesome interesting little front end there unfortunately missing a pillar now if it had, had the pillar i would have probably given it moco of the month but uh yeah that is lovely. Plastic wheels. So this is going to be around about a 1959er, I would I would guess. And I'm going to put the right answer obviously down below about now. So there we go. And here we go. The mob, the mob. Here it is. Wow. This is awesome. This is an impala. From around about the same period as that last one. Again, this one's got black wheels though, so this is a very early black wheel car. Chevrolet Impala. I think this they would have been originally released with uh, little grey wheels, so this is a later version. So that number 57. Chevrolet Impala. Brilliant. Now this re would replace that, uh, that other number 57 that I own, so uh, Great to have this car and a much more popular car in the lineup, I believe, too. So a little bit harder to find out there. And that beautiful uh, steel blue. Anyway, okay, this is K5 saying thanks for everybody to everybody for watching uh, my vids and um, hopefully uh, make some more soon. So have a good Halloween. Thanks for checking me out, subscribing, and uh, also my Instagram channel reached 500 subscribers on there too. So thanks to everybody that watches me on here and check, follows me on that one. So that's brilliant. Thank you very much. This is K5 saying uh, over and out. Ta-ta for now.